I became a peer mediator because it will help my friends and me better understand how to solve problems. I became a peer mediator because I thought students would stop getting suspended as much. I became a peer mediator because being a student leader is very important to me. I became a peer mediator because I wanted to help my community. Peaceful. Stops problems from getting worse. Safer schools. Our problems and our agreements. Be heard. It works. Our peer mediation program gives students a way to be heard, come together, and think about solutions that will work. TAP doesn't decide who's right or wrong. We start by talking about a problem and focus on finding a resolution. Students who want to become peer mediators are trained to handle conflicts. Some of the skills mediators need to have are being neutral, trustworthy, good listeners, who make sure to ask open-ended questions, let both sides be heard, and keep it fair. Mediators are helpers. We're trained not to judge who is right or wrong, gossip, or give our own advice or opinion. Mediators are more like guides to help students who are having their conflict find their way out of it, preventing further trouble. Now here's what a successful peer mediation session looks like, step by step. Before peer mediation takes place, there is a referral form sent to the mediators. It provides the mediators with information about the conflict from both sides. Welcome to TAP. My name is Carja Madison, and this is my co-mediator, Aaron White. Would you please introduce yourselves? I'm Matthew. A king. Our goal here today is to help you resolve your problem or conflict in a peaceful manner. At TAP, it's your problems and your decisions. Okay, before we start, we need to set a few ground rules. First, no interrupting. You will each get your chance to speak. Second, be honest with yourself and each other. Third, no insults, yelling, profanity, or put-downs. And fourth, work hard to find a peaceful resolution to your problem. Lastly, everything at TAP is confidential. Therefore, this should not be spoken of to teachers, students, or friends and we also will not discuss this situation. If someone is in danger, we will let an adult know, but before we tell an adult, we will let you know that we are telling an adult. Does everyone agree? Mm-hmm. Who would like to start? I'll start. Here's what happened. I was in the cafeteria minding my own business, and a king comes out of nowhere and slams into me, so I fall in the trash. I look up, and him and his friends are walking away laughing. Man, that's a lie. Akeem, please sit down. You will have your chance to speak. Continue, Matthew. I saw him laughing, so I got up and started cussing him. I don't know everything I said, but him and his friends deserve it. They're jerks. Calling someone a jerk is a form of name calling. Is there anything else? Yeah. After I started cussing him, him and his friends came over there and beat me up. All five of them against one of me. Akeem, what do you remember happening? Man, not all that. I remember me trying to catch up to my friends, and then the next thing I knew, Matthew was up and screaming at us. I mean, I might have bumped into him or something, but I didn't mean to do it on purpose. He needs to stop being a baby and just get over this. Calling someone a baby is name calling. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Before the accident, I never seen him in the hallway really much. But now, it's like he always, like he always staring at me and my friends from across the hallway, like he waiting for us to come over there and beat him up. So, Matthew, it seems like you're mad because Akeem pushed you over into the garbage can and then was being mean about it. Am I correct? Yeah. And Akeem, it seems like you're mad because you accidentally bumped Matthew, but then he started cursing and insulted you in front of your friends. Am I correct? You got it right. Let's see what we can do to solve this problem. Well, Akeem, what do you want from Matthew to stop the fighting? I want him to leave me alone and just get over this. And Matthew, what do you want from Akeem to stop the fighting? I want him to stop being mean. Maybe he didn't do it on purpose, but now he's just being mean to hard stuff. So, now we know what each of you want. Let's see what you are willing to do to get what you want. Matthew, what are you willing to do? I guess if I send my hallways, I won't talk mean to him. I keep going and I won't bother him or his friends either. Akeem, what are you willing to do? I guess I can leave him alone too if he able to leave me alone. 
And I apologize if I bumped into you at lunch, but I didn't mean to do it on purpose. Let's write our agreement. Akeem, you said that you agree not to mess with him in the hallways. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. And Matthew, you agree not to say anything mean to him. Am I correct? Yes. All right, let's sign this agreement to make it official. We'll give each of you a copy, and we'll keep a copy on file. Thank you for coming to TAP and letting us help you. Please tell anyone else who is in this conflict that it has been resolved. And now you can take your hall passes to the council's office to receive your award for coming to TAP. For real? All right. Those are the bases. What makes this so effective? We'll tell you. I think peer mediation is a good idea because it helps all students get over our problems without fighting. I think mediation is a good idea because it keeps kids a lot safer around school. I think peer mediation is good because I learned the right way to solve a conflict and so do my peers. We can all be heard. We keep it fair. It's student to student. We make a difference. Everyone wins. When we talk about the problem, we can find a resolution where we all win. That's tap. That's tap.